Hello everyone. Welcome to our next video. In today's class, we are dealing with another important concept in the plant breeding that is the germplasm. Uh, these are the small concept which has a very important value and very basic thing uh, for a plant breeder to know. So in the previous class, we have discussed about the introduction, plant introduction. Now we are continuing with the germplasm. Let's begin. Germplasm. Let's see the definition. Sum total of all the hered uh, please do consider this definition when we say germplasm of a crop. When you say germplasm of a crop, it is defined as sum total of all the hereditary material that is the alleles of various genes present in a crop species and its wild relatives. See, hereditary materials are basically the genes. Genes means alleles alleles i hope you know the difference between the gene and the allele so all the sum total of all such alleles in a particular crop and it's all wild relatives and some other from which the crop has been defined and the entire pool is known as germplasm this may of uh, five important types of material in which these germplasm may collect like a land races See, these land races are developed or evolved either through natural selection or artificial selection uh, from a previous species to uh, the evolution has takes place and now it has been has a very potential value and we can consider this as a source of many variabilities that is we call them as land races. There is a slight differences between the wild relatives and land races. See, land races is very related to the species and wild forms is the uh, if, uh, if you consider a particular crop it has been derived from a particular wild species that we call them as wild forms if we say the wild relatives and remaining other species of that wild form we call them as wild forms and wild relatives there is a difference uh, please do remember land races and wild forms absolute varieties See these observed varieties, once it has been developed by the breeding program, by certain breeding efforts have been made and they have been released in a, as a varieties but now these are not cultivated one. These were once cultivated but not now. But remember this has a special, uh, some special characters that can we can use them in now for the breeding programs and all. So it's also very important. And varieties in cultivation, and these varieties in cultivation are actually not much breeding efforts has been made in these but they are being cultivated and going, uh, giving good results for the farmers so this can be very useful in breeding programs to develop and the breeding lines see once the breeding program has been start breeding efforts has been made these cultivation or which crop has been included in the program will be maintained in some sort like a pure line some selections and all that one we call them as breeding lines and such a pure lines uh, we know such things can be used for the breeding programs which has a very potential value and wild forms i have said and next comes the special genetic stock see this special genetic stock is a very important area for the breeding because uh, these what land races or observate varieties which if they don't have such a potential gene or something these genetic stocks that has been maintained by the biotechnological efforts uh, like a mutation, uh, crossing and something, some somaclonal and whatever it may be. And those are maintained in a specialized laboratory and can be used for the breeding programs in further concept when it is that much required. That we call that such as sources we call them as special genetic stock. Now we shall discuss about another important concept and the germplasm that, that is gene pool concept <laughs> I would frankly say that gene pool concept and germplasm was always confusing for me and I would I have some I had some doubts and later on I was uh, I clarified such doubts and I will I would like to discuss such doubt with you uh, first let's see who introduced the concept of gene pool this concept was proposed by Harlan and David in 1971 Okay, let's see the definition. Consists of all such alleles present in all such individual 
which hybridize and can hybridize with each other. So this is the formal definition. But I would like to explain this definition with examples. First, let's see uh, what are the classifications under this. That is the primary gene pool GP1, uh, secondary gene pool GP2, and tertiary gene pool GP3. Okay. Now let's rub this and understand the concept. Uh, let's take six the uh, alphabets as some individual crops. We consider each alphabet as an individual crop. So let's take A, B, C, D, E, F, yeah. and let's write GP one, gene pool one, gene pool two, gene pool three. These are not columns. These are, I'm taking that as an example. See, let's consider. A and B can cross each other very easily. Means uh, there are those are of same species and can be easily crossed. Then we consider this under gene pool one. And let's also consider C D can easily cross with them among them. Then this also comes under gene pool one. Similar way, EF EF can be easily crossed. We call them that comes in gene pool one. That is, you remember the definition. They contain all the alleles of an individual. Means all the alleles of a genes in the both these plants. Means uh, A has some alleles of hundred alleles of the genes, and B has hundred alleles. Hundred plus hundred, both together consider two hundred alleles. Will be a gene pool one. Remember, overall that entire concept is called as gene pool one. In the similar way, C D and E F. So I hope you understand the definition. That is, individual individual can easily cross with each other. Then the genes alleles of all the alleles in this individual, and all the alleles of in this individual will together cons contribute to a gene pool one, G P one. Let's again assume some other thing that is, A can cross with C, but with little difficulties. Then we say that A and C comes under secondary gene pools. Means A cannot be crossed with a C as it was in B. Means A and B can easily cross, but A and C with little difficulties, with little care. With a little more care, with uh, with little more considerations, special environments, these can be crossed. Then we say that A and C can be crossed with a little difficulties, and that comes under secondary gene pool. Remember, secondary gene pool means the alleles of A, alleles of C together contributes to the secondary gene pool. In a similar way, we can say C, C and E. We can. These are just consideration. These are not a particular column which has been declared. This is just consideration. I am considering for the understanding basis. And I can also say D F can also be crossed with a little difficulties. Now let's come under gene pool three. See in this gene pool, these are not only easily crossed, but I am sorry. In gene pool three, they actually can't easily be crossed. Means A and E. Let's consider A and E actually can't be crossed, but with the modern technology, some or something, they may be crossed. Of uh, for a hundred percent, we can say zero point zero 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 one percent. Or the such a low percentage of success will be there for this cross, and actually they can't be easily crossed. That's we can we say that A and E comes under gene pool. That is. The allele sub A, allele sub E comes under tertiary gene pool. Means in this gene pool they can't easily be crossed. There is a very more failure in such crosses. That's all about this gene pool concept. I hope I tried better to uh, understand, make understand this concept. If you have any doubts, please do uh, tell me in the comment sections. Now let's understand the other concepts such as genetic erosions. I hope the name itself indicate that the erosion of the gene components or the variability. Let's say the definition: 
gradual loss of variability i know the variability is the essential and very must tool for the plant breeders and the loss of variability is an erosion it's a very devastating for the breeders that is the gradual loss of variability from a cultivated species means uh, the from a cultivated species which has been cultivated now and their wild forms and wild relatives means once these variabilities were present at that time but now in the wild forms or in the, in the cultivated species or in the land races something else but these variabilities are not seen now then we say that it has been eroded it has the erosion of the genetic component has been took place there are many reasons and the major reason itself the human that how we improved ourselves in management practices and some, something we came out of this natural components for the improvement of the human health and human wealth also in such a process and such a journey that this has been uh, has been lost we say uh, we get something at the cost of some other things that this might be the cost of what we are today next is the germ plasm conservation germ plasm has to be maintained in such a state that minimizes risk of its loss and allow either direct planting in fish or its preparation for planting with a direct yeast we say that the germ plasm has been conserved by ibpgr mbpgr and all how it has been consumed as they maintain in a field or in a laboratories or in the special banks like lockers and all no this is a, that is what has been defined here a germ plasm conservation itself means that it has to be maintained in such a state that it minimizes the risk of its loss means it has to uh, and the conservation methods will not be same for every crop or every germ plasm what we attract the storage of every germ plasm should be in such a way that it minimizes the loss of the uh, risk of the loss it minimizes the risk of loss then storing is also not only important thing but also regenerating means it has been stored if you want to use that it has to be regenerated we should take care that it should grow directly in the field or uh, by the planting material which has been has a special methods uh, from which it has to be done that is what we have said direct planting in the field it should be directly planted or its preparation we have to prepare that germ plasm for planting in the field with the direct yeast that's about this uh, erosion and we'll continue discussing this germ plasm conservation under the germ plasm conservation there are very two important method that is very common you know that that is in situ conservation and ex situ conservation let's speak few words as such the in situ conservation the conservation of a germ plasm in its natural habitat or in the area where it is naturally grown this is like a movie watching in its own mother language i would always prefer that in similar way the nat nature the growing or conserving a germ plasm in its natural area or where it has been grown we don't uh, alternate we don't artificially maintain them we maintain them naturally uh, that maintains the good quality of that germ plasm and all the major area where it has been conserved is the natural park biosphere reserve gene sanctuary they has been developed such a natural parks biosphere reserves where we can see such a good amount of germ plasms or very special uh, plants in such area to conserve that this has been grown and they are maintained maintaining means preventing the area from humans humans are the major threat preventing the area from humans and protection from the humans itself the in situ conservation what it means and this also has some um, demerits that it is very difficult to maintain even in such areas there will be animals and all uh, to maintain of such animals on in plants also germplasm sometimes some or other effect may happen and Uh, the disease or pest something something may happen and it may be lost the maintaining and such uh, things are actually very difficult but the if we maintain that will be a very good source now we shall discuss about another type of conservation that is the ex situ conservation the conservation of the germ plasm away from its natural habitat there are five important ways through which we conserve 
See, remember that exit conservation mainly comes in order when we believe or when we get to know that this germplasm or this plant may not be conserved in a natural habitat or it may be very much cost uh, it may cost very much to maintain in a natural habitat or there is a lot of threat and if we get to know that then we conserve them in such a way or if that is uh, very important for the for the process like uh, breeding or some other concepts we maintain them here the ways through which in the exclusive conservation we maintain is in the laboratories especially remember these are the laboratories seed gene bank and the varieties of seed and the ways it has to be uh, recalcitrant orthodox and we learn a lot of the things under that and in such a way this seed gene bank, bank is maintained next comes the plant or field gene bank in the very protected area itself they come and plant here and the field itself they maintain but not as a natural one natural means they are naturally grown there here they artificially grow and shoot tip gene bank shoot tips are collected and maintained in the laboratories cell and organ gene bank cell or organ has been developed and they are maintained and dna gene bank dns are being conserved and maintained and remember there are very special mechanisms of maintaining these they actually cost us much but when we consider in a large amount maintaining the germplasm in a various different field with other other much cost they can be maintained at a single place that is through these ways finally we see the activities that can be taken under the germplasm conservation one is collection collection means how we collect the germplasm uh, for the ex situ conservation and all we have to maintain them right first we have to go on the exploration and procure the uh, germplasm that is the first important thing is collection we have to collect them then the conservation of it uh, comes under and how it can be conserved whether it's a tip bud or something we have to uh, consider that and we have to plan a special conservation mechanism for that uh, then comes the evaluation evaluation means whether it is a quality or a good uh collection or good germplasm will it be more effective in future or not we have to consider all such things and we have to evaluate uh, then we have to pass on to the next stage that is the cataloging in the cataloging we, we give them a name where it has been the date of collection and entire thing will be done in the cataloging then comes the multiplication and distribution see uh, every time you need a germplasm means we can't go on exploration otherwise we bring them we see the quality we go for the multiplication of their germplasm and we distribute to which people or the to which breeder it is required and that breeder make utilization of this germplasm these are the activities that can be taken under the germplasm conservation and germplasm i hope you have learned lot in this concept and if you have any doubts if you want me to cover something more in the germplasm please do give your uh, valuable feedbacks in the comment section thanks for watching uh, please do like share and subscribe thank you